Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Race for the Galaxy. This is the digital adaptation of the popular card game. You can find this on Steam for about 7 bucks. The DLCs Gathering Storm, Rebel vs. Imperium, and Brink of War are roughly $4 each, but everything right now is 30% off as part of this Steam summer sale. So, what is Race for the Galaxy? Well, it is a card game engine builder where you're going to be laying cards down into your tableau in an effort to score as many victory points as possible. Not only are you going to be gaining victory points from these cards, but these cards will provide you with various abilities that can be used during different phases of a round. The kicker is, is that not all phases are going to be available every single round. Typically, there are, I want to say, five phases in all, but like I said, you're not going to be doing all of them. The first phase is exploring, the second phase is developing, the third phase is settling, the fourth phase is consuming, and the fifth phase is producing. But depending on what phases people pick in secret, only maybe one or two of them may be available during any given round. The explore phase allows players to draw cards into their hand. And cards in this game not only serve to be played into your tableau, but also serve as currency. Um, these cards have a cost to play them into your tableau. For example, if there's a little number three in the upper left-hand corner, that means you have to play three cards, typically, in order to play the one that you want. Okay. Uh, the develop uh, phase is where you can actually play specific development cards. The cards come in two flavors, worlds and development. Think like technologies. So um, d during the second phase, you'll be able to develop technology cards. And that means pay the cost of the technology and then play that card to your tableau. Same thing with phase three, the settling phase. That's a world. You'll be able to play a world card to your tableau. Again, by paying the cost by discarding other cards in your hand. The fourth phase, the consume phase, is more about, well, it consumes goods that are on your worlds, and I'll get to that in a little bit, in order to gain either cards or victory points so that, you know, you can further your empire. The fifth phase, produce, is where you can actually place goods onto your, your worlds. Um, if your world has a specific color to it, say blue or green or whatever, you'll produce that particular good during that phase. And each world can only produce and, and hold one good at a time. Okay, So there's a couple of... I, I know it's kind of a lot to throw at you all at once, but the typical gameplay flow is you pick a phase on your turn, and then everyone reveals what they've picked at once. And again, you're going to pick it in secret, everyone reveals, and then you observe these phases one at a time in order, okay? Again, explore, develop, uh, develop settle, consume, produce, okay? And then uh, no matter what, no matter who picks what, everyone does those phases. So let's say that your opponent picked the explore phase and you picked the develop phase. Well, again, you're going to be doing phases one and two because those were the two phases that were picked for this round. So you can do the explore phase. Even though your opponent picked it, you can still do it. Again, the kicker to that is if you picked that phase, you get a little bit of a bonus. Okay? So, for example, during the development phase, if you picked the develop phase, you get one free resource or one free I, I i guess i should say one minus the cost of whatever technology you're trying to develop so let's say you pick the development phase and you go to develop a technology because you pick the develop phase your cost is going to be minus one so if you attempt to play a card that costs three you only have to give up two cards instead of three because you actually picked that phase the same goes for every other phase in this game so when you pick a particular phase you get a bonus related to that phase so there's some there's some give or take there's some you know strategy and when to pick what there's also a two player variant that i really like where players can choose two phases so if again in a two player game your opponent picks two you pick two i love that it, it's my favorite way to play it really is and without getting into the specifics on how everything ties together the cards that you play onto your tableau 
have specific references to the phases. So there's a number of ways to play this. Um, you could play cards onto your tableau that give you bonuses to, say, one particular phase, and then you can just focus on that phase and constantly pick it every round in order to get a lot of stuff. Or you can diversify. You can pick bonuses that are for this phase, and then the next card you play, I'll, I'll, th this, this card has a bonus for this phase. Like it might say, every time you pick phase one from here on out, you get to draw an extra card, or you get to do this. Or every time you develop a technology in phase two, you get an extra card. So again, you're going to be playing these cards to your tableau, building an engine of sorts, okay? And... Um, there's also different strategies in terms of earning victory points. Um, there are There's something called military worlds in this game where rather than spend cards to put these military worlds down, you actually have to have military strength to just simply take it over. And certain cards will give you military strength. So if, the, if this world has a military strength of three and you're trying to play it, you need to have something existing in your tableau that has military strength totaling three or greater, okay? So there's something to worry about there. You can also focus on producing goods. So let's say you've got a bunch of worlds in your tableau. One of your choices for, you know, one thing that you want to choose whenever you're picking your phase is produce. You'll produce a ton of goods, put all these goods onto all the different worlds that you have, and then on your next phase, consume them all for victory points or for getting more cards. That's another way to get victory points in this game. How do you get victory points? Well, there's two ways. When you play a card, each card has an inherent victory point associated with it. Um, so that when the game ends, you just count up however many victory points you have on your cards, and that's that. There's also victory point tokens that you can earn by consuming goods. Again, whenever you consume a good, you can either get a card or a victory point, depending on what your consume powers are on the cards in your tableau. I know it's a lot to take in. It's not a game I can teach you in five minutes. However, I just want to point out that there's a lot of different ways to play this game, and this engine builder is fantastic. Um, there are other variations of Race for the Galaxy out there on the market. There's also Roll for the Galaxy, which I have played several times, and I really enjoy that. Highly recommend checking that game out as well. There's also, um, again, other variants to Race for the Galaxy. There's like a board game version of this that does not involve cards. That's also something I highly recommend checking out. Um, Jump Drive, I think, is another variation which in, just solely involves cards. So if you want to, you know, explore this this whole, this I guess this universe, this Race for the Galaxy universe, um, I think the hardest thing is to get used to the iconography. Once you get past that and how everything flows, then you'll be able to play almost any game in this particular series. But um, in reference to this particular game, Race for the Galaxy, I highly recommend checking this out if you like engine builders. If you guys haven't already, subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.